Welcome back to the Ferris Sports Update. Now sitting down with head coach of Ferris State Hockey, Bob Daniels. Coach, welcome to the show. Harrison, good to be here. Uh, it's a good weekend for you guys. Ten goals on the weekend. Uh, able to get your scoring average up a little bit. And good to see the offense coming alive for you guys. You know what was, and, and on the, you know, the tail really of two different games. On the Friday night game, um, we won 2 nothing. It ended up 3 nothing with an empty netter, but uh, that was much. Uh, it, it was a game where I thought both goaltenders were outstanding. That game could have been much higher in scoring. Uh, and you look at it compared to the game on Saturday, where I, I don't think the goaltenders for either team played exceptionally well. And, and uh, the result was it was a throwback to 1980s hockey. The, the Edmonton Oilers versus uh, Winnipeg Jets, you know, where the scores were 7 6 and that sort of thing. But it is good uh, to see us getting some goals, scoring some goals. Um, the depth of scoring Saturday night was really good, where we got 14 points, or yeah, 14. Uh, I don't know how many points we got, but we got points from 14 different players. That means we had some depth in our scoring. And that's something we've lacked for a while. A lot of times it's Mayhew, Maloney, and Peffley. And now all of a sudden, we've got some other guys uh, adding to the mix, and we're getting some goals from our defensemen, which we traditionally have, and now it's starting to come. Well, shorthand goals, power play goals, a little bit of everything there in that Saturday night game, as we mentioned. We'll get to that in just a few moments. But uh, Justin Kaplan, after the first night, 40 save shutout. First collegiate shutout, first start at home, and that's going to feel pretty good here as we get to the highlights. Yeah, it it, it sure did, does, and and uh, you know the, the, the he obviously he's five and zero on the season, and his first four games he was exceptional. In this game, uh, you can't ask for anything more. You know, I, I believe he had an assist in this game, so a shutout, an assist, and, and a three nothing win. Uh, the first goal here, you see. Uh, Gerald Mayhew, no, uh, no surprise there, scores. That, that line's been so good for us all year long. And you're going to see some clips here where uh, Justin's going to earn this shutout and uh, played exceedingly well. Yeah, Gerald Mayhew uh, just continues to score at really a prolific pace. Goals in five consecutive games. He's got uh, goals in five, uh, six of his last seven as well. And uh, it just seems to be playing at a different level for you guys now. Well, you know what? He's always been a goal scorer, but you're right. He's doing it at a, a much better uh, clip. It, right there, we just saw a nice block by number 17, Jared Van Wormer. And he, as a captain, he's been playing exceptional. And that it's that kind of selflessness right there. You're going to see a goal right here, uh, Peffley, on a five on three that actually goes in off their defender. And we'll see one on from Saturday night, the exact same thing, where uh, he, a lot of times on five on three, the plays around the net all the time. And uh, uh, it, it actually gets tipped by a lot of times by your own guys trying to stop pucks from getting to the goal. Here you see Capmaster, great leg save, really cat quick. And just to get back on Gerald Mayhew for a minute, though, um, he. Uh, He's always been a scorer, as they say, but I think right now he's emerging as, in my opinion, one of the top three forwards uh, in all college hockey in the nation. And certainly he's got to be in the mix of uh, Hobie Baker candidates. And, you know, you look at his numbers and, and uh, amazing considering that he missed a number of games earlier in the year. And uh, he is, he is scoring about 1.25 points per game. That's incredible. That's up within the leaders within the nation. Four game winning goals so far this season for Mayhew. You guys have only won five games, uh, so he, he's gotten it done in a lot of them. As we get to the second game highlights, he had game winning goals in both games this weekend uh, to sweep the Lake Superior State Lakers as we get ready for these uh, Saturday night highlights. Yeah, well, you know, they talk about uh, big, you know, uh, you, you want your best players to play their best uh, at crunch time, and he certainly does. Uh, Nate uh, Callen here, this is great to see him score his first collegiate goal. Um, he's really been unbelievable uh, his transformation from uh, junior hockey to college hockey he's done very well there's a goal uh, where Capo master now one of the things he this first time he started back-to-back -back games and he's going to need to learn um, in terms of it's like a golfer he's got to he, it's not physical it's mental you've got to be locked in for, for two straight nights and he'll get better and he does enough to get the win uh, in this game but you can see he's not as sharp as he was the night before that goal we just saw there was the five-on-three goal that uh, uh, I had mentioned actually went off of one of our own players. Shot from the point there by Colin Sockerman, and uh, they go up three to two, but a nice response. Here's Zach Tierney getting his first collegiate goal as well, and uh, he's played a lot of important minutes for you guys this year. Yeah, he has, and a uh, guy that had a hard time getting in the lineup last year given that we had uh, four senior defensemen, and, and he had to kind of wait his turn, and you know, now it's his time uh, going into his sophomore year. Here was a, a real tough one for us. Great individual play by Hultz, who is one of the named players in our conference. A great finish. But, um, 
you know, that was a short-handed goal for them, and, and you hate to give up a goal when you're on the power play. Moments later, though, you guys get it back here. Jerry Van Warmer right in front of the net doing the work, tips it in. Well, that's nice. The good response because that, that's the same power play. Here's a really nice goal by Corey Mack, and is he starting to play well? And uh, now we're starting, like I said, we're starting to see more scoring from more lines. Obviously capped off by Gerald Mayhew right here. What a nice goal he scores there. And I think Corey Mack is going to get a second of the night here on an empty net goal. These are important, though. You can never discount those because uh, you've got to have those uh, empty net goals. Get the insurance. Because you don't score at that end. They miss the net. And they come down to the score here. Uh, yeah, you could have salted the game away. Now, uh, taking a look at the guys that scored some goals there in that game, uh, Chad McDonald getting a breakaway goal, and he's a guy that off to a tough start this year as a senior. He's a guy that uh, has scored for you a lot in the past. He's got 69 points in his college hockey career, so uh, you know he can bring it offensively. He got that goal. How important is it for a guy like him to get back on the board? Well, we need it. We need that depth in scoring, as I said, you know, to, to, to really lean so hard on, on uh, our top line with uh, Maloney, Peffley, and Mayhew. Um, we've got to increase the depth of our scoring. Now we're seeing Corey Mackin starting to come. Um, I know Jared Van Wormer is going to start scoring more goals. And, and obviously, Chad McDonald's got the resume that says he'll score more as well. And, you know, not to make excuses for him, but he came off a pretty serious injury at the end of last year, had major surgery, uh, was not in quote unquote like our training camp um, so he hit the ground running once he was cleared and healthy he didn't really have a build up to the season and it's taken him a little while but he's, he's looking a little bit better each and every day. Corey Mack and a guy that had so many scoring chances and has had him and had a lot more on the weekend than he ended up putting in the back of the net but uh, good to see him when he gets another great scoring chance finishing these scoring chances. It is and, and uh, he leads our team by a wide margin in shots on goal which is a good sign. If you're a goal scorer you're getting your shots or eventually go in. But it has been frustrating watching him come away with five, six shots a night and, and no goals, nothing to, to show for it. And that's only the shots on goal. He's had a number of opportunities to score where he shot wide or high. So. He's, it's starting to come. His whole game's rounding out now. He's playing 200 feet of the rink. Well, by that, I mean before I thought he was leaning a little to the offensive side, maybe not detailed enough defensively. Now his whole game's coming around, and guess what? He's scoring goals. Now you guys are uh, back in a great position here in the WCHA standings after a little bit of a slow start. Uh, you're just one point out of being in the top four echelon where you guys expect to be, and uh, that's got to feel pretty good after this weekend. Boy, it does. You know, considering the hole we were in, I think at one point, I don't know, we're 0 6 and 1 or 1 6 and 1 in conference, and all of a sudden we're within a game of 500. Um, if we can get to that and, and we're 500 at the break, uh, that means we're halfway through the schedule and then it's time to go to work in the second half. But, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing the, the, the signs of the team we, we thought we could be. Um, we had hoped to get to this juncture quick. And it doesn't mean it's going to be smooth sailing forward. I mean, we're going to hit a few more rocks and bumps in the road, but it, what it does tell me is we got the right guys to go through uh, the rocky periods. Coach, thanks for joining me here on the Ferris Sports Update. Hey, it's been my pleasure, Harrison. When we come back, we'll talk to the head coach of Ferris State Women's Volleyball, Tia Brando Wilhelm.